that recovery for a lot of airlines will be uh, dependent upon or focused on bringing in new aircraft. A lot of those being ordered uh, and being leased through, from you are Boeing aircraft, 737 Maxes, 787 Dreamliners. Last month, you were very clear, very blunt about saying, look, Boeing's had some problems in terms of delivering these aircraft, and you said they need to get their act together. Do you still feel that way about Boeing? Uh, very much so. I mean, we had a situation where in March of 2019, uh, all of the maxes were grounded worldwide. Uh, we had to wait till the end of last year, end of 2020, for FA certification. And the foreign authorities, including the Europeans, uh, just uh, authorized use of the airplane early this year. There's a number of countries like uh, China, uh, Russia and others that have still not certified the MAX. So there's great pent-up demand for the airplane, uh, but uh, the production rates are much lower than they were before the grounding. Uh, we've had some engineering issues uh, where a number of aircraft that were delivered earlier this year had to be grounded again for a period of weeks. So it's been a spotty recovery. And then on 787s, uh, we've seen... Uh, very, very significant challenges at Boeing, uh, particularly at the Charleston, uh, South Carolina facility. Sure. Uh, the FAA is all over them, and, and airplanes are not delivering right now. No 787s are delivering at this moment. Have you told this to, to Dave Calhoun and to Stan Deal at Boeing? Have you said, look, what's the problem here? Or what, have you, what have your conversations been like? Uh, they've been professional, but uh, I've been very open with them that this is not the Boeing we know. They've got to get their production systems in line. They've got to improve quality control. They have to meet their promises. And Boeing has let down a lot of their customers. I think they're working very hard, putting a lot of resources on getting back on track. But it's been a very, very difficult uh, last two-plus years with Boeing. Hey, Stephen, I want to go back to what you just said a moment ago. It really caught my attention, the idea that you think this is not the same Boeing that you used to be dealing with and that you, you've said as much. What, what do you think went wrong? What happened? How, how did all these problems come about, at least from a customer's perspective? Well, I think, I think the biggest issue that I see looking back 20 years is Boeing used to be the leader, uh, introducing airplanes like the 747, the 777, the 787. And I feel like in the last five or six years, they've allowed Airbus to spend more money on R&D and basically take market share away from them particularly in the narrow body, the single-aisle family. So the combination of the A320neo and the A321neo has really dented Boeing's market share uh, on, on 737s. And, and that's the bread-and-butter airplane for Boeing. And uh, the very sad story with the two accidents uh, and, the, and the investigations uh, all demonstrated that Boeing could have done a better job. So I think, I think there was a leadership problem. I feel that the board of the company was a little disconnected from what was going on in Seattle. And then you had the tremendous pressure from Congress on the FAA, FAA oversight. So I think it was a culmination of all these things coming together that has put a lot of pressure on Boeing. Then we had the pandemic. We had the grounding of the 737s. So no question Boeing's had tremendous challenges. But they've got to work their way out of it. Uh, we have a duopoly. Uh, we cannot have a situation where we have one dominant aircraft manufacturer. So we're going to work with Boeing. We have a long partnership that goes back like 45 years. And we're going to work very hard with them to make sure that they do what they have to do to get back on, 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 on the right track. The, the types of problems that you're talking about, not investing enough, I mean, those are problems that, that take place years and years before the, you know, the inefficiencies or the problems actually kind of sprout up and people can see them. How far back exactly. do you think this goes? They've made a lot of management changes, and, and do you think the management changes have been sufficient? Well, you, you can change the lineup in the orchestra, but if the music doesn't sound good to the audience, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the changing people just for the ch uh, sake of changing leadership titles is not going to solve the problem. Boeing has to look at the future. What are the kind of airplanes that airlines will need with all of the environmental challenges, regulatory challenges? What is the airplane type that airlines will need 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now? And Boeing needs to invest. Uh, the 737 is a wonderful airplane. 
but it's been operation since 1967. So we have an airplane design. The basic design has been around 54 years. So it's time for a new technology airplane that will give airlines and the public greater efficiency, better economics, a better environmental footprint, so the airlines can make money with it and yet meet the challenges that we're facing on the environmental front. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.